Is your fitness tracker lying to you? Well, here's what pro bodybuilder and famous YouTuber Sam Selig had to say about devices that track your calories. Let's take a look. Because when I see somebody wearing an Apple Watch and they post it after their workout, really? You burned 1,500 calories in an hour? Dude, that's fucking, I don't know how much you know about calories, but that's fucking bullshit. So if the fitness apps are weird, and the machines probably don't really know what's going on with your metabolism or whatever else. Then, what, well, just do 30 minutes, break a solid sweat, you're probably good. Sam might be over-exaggerating a bit in here when he says 1,500 calories in an hour, but even if you look down at your Apple Watch post-workout, it's saying you burned 500 calories. Can you actually trust that number? Well, if you've ever relied on a fitness tracker to tell you how many calories you burned, you might not want to hear this, but those numbers could be way off. So how do these devices actually calculate calorie burn and why do they get it so wrong? And most importantly, if you can't really trust them, how do you actually know how many calories to eat for fat loss or muscle gain? In today's video, I'm going to be breaking it all down for you, including strategic ways that you can use fitness trackers to boost your weight loss, how to stop sabotaging your results with inaccurate data, and the specific tracker that I personally use each day. So make sure you keep watching until the end as I reveal all these three things. Hey guys, my name is Andres, a registered dietitian and a performance coach who helps busy, high achieving men dial in their nutrition so they can build muscle, lose fat, and actually sustain their results. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back to subscribers and welcome if you are new here. Super excited as we dive into a newer topic today. Now, one thing about me is I'm a big tech guy. So I love experimenting with different apps and wearables to really optimize my health in a data driven way. I know tracking isn't really for everyone. Some people prefer maybe a more intuitive approach. And I respect that. But I also know that there's a lot of people that really prefer metrics and, you know, it helps them create awareness, drive accountability and helps fine tune progress as we go along that. This is why I don't necessarily see tech as a gimmick, but more as a tool that you can use. And as with any tool, in order for that tool to be useful, you need to understand its strengths and its limitations, which is exactly what we're going to be talking about today when it comes down to fitness trackers and wearable tech. These devices have a ton of different features, but the specific metrics that I'm going to be focusing on today is calories burn. Specifically, I'm going to be diving into one, how fitness trackers calculate calorie burn. Number two, the biggest factors that throw off those calorie estimates. And number three, the best ways to use trackers to support weight loss or fat loss without getting duped by misleading data. Now, by the end, I'm hoping that you know exactly whether you should trust your fitness tracker, whatever you're wearing, or calorie burning, and how to figure out your calorie goals for weight loss as well. So if that sounds good, make sure you hit that like button right now, subscribe to my channel. And if you haven't already, let's make sure we get right into it. So let's first talk about the most popular fitness tracker brands out there. We have things like Garmin, Fitbit, Apple Watch, Whoop, and Ordering. They have also Polar, but those are usually straps. Now I've tested a lot of them and I've actually found my favorite, which I'm going to share at the end of today's video. But here's the thing, no matter which one you use, they'll calculate calories burned using a mix of sensors and formulas. Some approaches for measuring calorie burn are more complex than others, but in general, it's the same approach for each one. First, these trackers get an estimate of your basal metabolic rate or BMR, which is the number of calories your body burns at rest. The number is calculated using standard equations based on your age your sex, your weight, and your height. I've talked about this in my channel before. Now, most of these devices rely on formulas like the mifflin saint Jor equation, which provides a rough estimate of how many calories your body needs just to maintain basic functions like breathing, digestion, or brain activity. Once your tracker determines your BMR, it combines this with data from your daily activity, like your step count, your movement, and your heart rate. And what that gives you, it's a total daily energy expenditure, or TDEE. This is the amount of calories you burn total throughout the day, including activity. Now, most of these trackers have their own proprietary formulas that combine BMR with data gathered from body sensors to come up with some form of estimate of your calories burnt or the amount of calories that you used throughout the day. For example, Garmin uses a combination of heart rate and respiration date derived from heart rate variability to determine calories burnt from activity. Whoop and Fitbit both use heart rate data along with their unique formulas for estimating calories burnt from physical activity, which they don't really make available publicly, so it's impossible also for us to really know how they're measuring this information. Now, many of these devices also use something called a compendium of physical activities, which is basically a giant 
chart that assigns calorie burn estimates to different activities. The tracker takes your movement data, matches it up to an activity from that list, and then it adjusts the number based on your heart rate. The problem is they're always making an educated guess. In a lab setting, calorie expenditure is measured using indirect calorimetry, which you breathe into a machine that analyzes how much oxygen you use and how much carbon dioxide you are actually expiring or producing. This tells scientists how much energy your body is burning in real time. Fitness trackers don't actually measure calories burned because that will require advanced lab equipment. So we have the BMR formulas, which are an estimate, the formulas for determining calorie burn from activity data, which are also an estimate. And then the result is that there is a potential for a lot of error in the data that your wearable is actually giving you. Let's talk about factors that affect accuracy of calorie measurements. The accuracy of fitness trackers in counting calories depends on a ton of different factors. Number one is individual metabolism because it varies from person to person. Some people naturally burn more or your calories than the standard formulas predict due to differences in genetics, hormone levels, and metabolic rate. Me, for example, I burn a lot less than my estimated BMR, so I know for a fact that whatever my tracker is giving me, most likely there's going to be a bit of a discrepancy. Muscle mass also plays a large role, since muscle burns more calories at rest than fat, meaning two people of the same weight could have very different calorie expenditures. Also, training style is another major factor. While steady-state cardio like running may be fairly easy for trackers to measure, activities like strength training, high intensity interval training or hit, or even certain sports can be miscalculated or leading to over or underestimation of calories burned. Heart rate variability, which is another one, can also fluctuate based on stress, hydration, and recovery, and may also throw off estimates as some trackers rely heavily on heart rate data to calculate their calorie burn. I actually did an entire breakdown of this and talking about HRV and everything you needed to know about this for weight loss specifically and performance in one of my most recent videos, so I'm going to drop the link to that video in the description if you want to go and check it out. Finally, fitness levels and body composition impact how efficiently the body uses energy, which means two different people because doing the exact same workout might burn a completely different amount of calories. Now let's dive a little bit into the research. As I mentioned before, different fitness trackers use slightly different approaches and formulas to estimate the calorie expenditure that they give you. And while there isn't a ton of information available on exactly what these formulas look like, we do have some research into the accuracy of different tracker brands and models. For example, one systematic review from 2020 looked at the reliability and the validity of a bunch of different brands and models of fitness trackers. Now, with Instant Garmin were a couple of the brand trackers and that they looked at it consistently underestimated calorie burn, which means that they often told users that they burned fewer calories than what they actually did. Garmin did this 69% of the time when they were measuring this, and with Inks did 74% of the time they got these numbers. On the other hand, Apple and Polar Wear tended to overestimate calorie expenditure, making workouts seem like they torched more calories than they actually did. Apple was overshooting calories, for example, 58% of the time that they measured it, and Polar 69% of the time. Then there's Fitbit, which was kind of all over the place, sometimes undercounting, sometimes overcounting, making it one of the least reliable options for calorie tracking. Sorry, guys, if you're wearing a Fitbit. It's also the cheapest one, to be honest, so it makes sense. In another systematic review that compiled the results of 65 different studies on where wearable fitness trackers, there was poor accuracy across all devices in measuring energy expenditure. Looking at the research on 72 different devices produced by 29 different companies, the researchers found that the Fitbit Charge and the Fitbit Charge HR had good accuracy for step counts, but not for the other things, as I just explained. Now, the Apple Watch was a standout for its accuracy measuring heart rate, but none of the tested devices gave accurate measurements for energy expenditure, which is what this video is about. In fact, if you look at the graph on screen, you will see the margins of error for all these devices for steps, HR, and energy. But when you look at the boxes, the one that clearly has the largest margins of error, it's going to be energy expenditure. Now, I can get into the specifics of the different devices and variations between them, but I don't think it's too relevant to dive into all that because we have our big takeaway. Calorie burn estimates from wearable devices have consistently proven to be inaccurate. Now, how does that affect your fat loss, weight loss, or even like muscle gaining goals or journey that you're currently on? Well, 
We know there are issues with calorie burn data, but what do we do with that information? Well, inaccurate trackers are only really a problem if you're using this data to make decisions about your food intake for weight loss or whatever goal you're really working to achieve. I'll explain what that might look like. Say your fitness tracker is massively overestimating your calorie expenditure, the way that Sam Selig was talking about it in the clip that I showed you at the beginning of this video. If your device says you're burning a ton of calories, you might think you have more room for extra snacks in your daily calorie budget, if you think about it that way, than you actually do. So maybe you add maybe more food into your day because you think, well, I'm still below the goal to stay in that calorie deficit, when in reality, maybe these added snacks could be causing you to overshoot your calorie goals. Now, if you do this consistently, what's going to happen is you're either going to end up stuck and not necessarily losing any weight, or you're going to end up gaining weight, which is the worst part. On the flip side, if your device happens to underestimate your number of calories you're burning, you might end up only fueling, leaving yourself hungry, frustrated, lower energy. But either way, relying on these numbers alone can make it really easy to accidentally stall your progress. But I'm not here to tell you to ditch your tracker completely. In fact, I wear one. I'm going to talk about it in a second. The key is knowing how to actually use this information to support your goals without getting caught up in misleading numbers. So instead of getting lost again on those calorie burn estimates, I'm going to explain how to actually use your tracker to support your weight loss goals the right way. Number one, focus on consistency with exercise rather than worrying about how many calories your tracker thinks you're burning. You need to shift your focus to movement-based metrics that actually help drive results. Things like daily step counts, aiming for a step goal that keeps you moving throughout the day, which again supports overall fat loss and cardiovascular health. Second is active minutes. Let's go back to the same solid clip that I showed you earlier so we can see exactly what he said. If the fitness apps are weird and the machines probably don't really know what's going on with your metabolism or whatever else, then what, just do 30 minutes, break a solid sweat, you're probably good. Of course, 30 minutes isn't really the magic number for fat loss. And I, but I completely agree with what he's saying here. Focus more on showing up for your workout and getting some exercise in rather than obsessing about how many calories that workout burnt. Tracking how much time you're being active throughout your week can ensure that you're staying consistent with your workouts. Plus, it's also important to keep in mind that not all benefits of exercise for fat loss are captured by how many calories you're burning. For example, if you do a 20 minute yoga session, maybe you might burn as many calories as doing like a full intense sprint session of like five to 10 minutes. Then maybe you reduce your stress levels as a result of that. And because of those lower stress levels, you avoid stress eating later at night and you also sleep better. Both of those things are going to have major impact on your fat loss results over time by naturally reducing the total number of calories that you're consuming. Another one is the strength progress. If you're lifting weights, focus on whether you're getting stronger or bigger, I guess, if you're building muscle at a time. Are you lifting heavier, doing more reps, feeling more powerful? These changes are what truly shapes your physique, not just calorie estimates on your watch. I have noticed, for example, that in my weightlifting sessions, I burn a lot less than, for example, doing a CrossFit class. But that doesn't necessarily mean that maybe just doing that type of lifting session is going to help me more in my body composition and building more muscle and losing more fat compared to a CrossFit class. But again, as a summary here, if you keep these things in check, you will naturally create the conditions for fat loss and muscle gain without getting distracted by inaccurate calorie burn numbers. The second piece I wanted to talk about is using nutrition tracking for fat loss or muscle gain. If you want to track calories, I'll strongly suggest focusing on optimizing your nutrition rather than worrying about how many calories your fitness tracker says you're burning and trying to get that number as high as possible. Many apps now integrate data from wearable tech into their total calorie needs. And this is a big mistake. I'm talking about chronometer. I'm talking about my fitness pal, lose it. The problem with these apps is that they automatically add calories based on your expenditure as measured by your heart rate trackers. I'm all about making sure we adjust calories based on changes to training and lifestyle and movement, but not based on what an Apple Watch or other tracker is giving me. I suggest you disable that feature where the app adds extra calories to your days based on that. Your fitness trackers can help you create awareness around activity, but it shouldn't be the deciding factor on how much you're eating. And I don't even recommend burning calories through exercise just so you can eat more later or, or compensating for food you're eating by trying to burn them off with exercise. The third thing I want to share is how you can use estimated calorie needs and track how your body responds. Rather than relying on fitness trackers' calorie burn estimates, which can have a ton of fluctuations day by day, like I think we've made the point in here, a better approach is to start with a solid estimate of your calorie needs using something like an online calculator or a person like me, who I'm a registered dietitian, I estimate things based on a bunch of different factors. But online calculators can give you a reliable starting point on how much you should be eating based on your goals. Of course, that is still an estimate, but it's how we work with that estimate that is actually what's important. So I'll explain that in a second, just so you can understand my point here. 
But first, let me tell you about something pretty cool that I put together that can help you in this process. I had a lot of men coming to me and saying that they tried out a bunch of different calorie calculators online and they were looking at the estimates they were really getting from a lot of these calculators. They were way off or they were just curious really how they work and they were not sure if that was accurate. I realized there was a big gap on doing this and it was a huge factor that was actually keeping a lot of these guys stuck in their fat loss goals. So I decided I wanted to build my own calorie calculator based on the most recent research and in years of experience working with clients. And unlike many calculators online, the tools that I created for this allow you to estimate your calories based on your training, how many steps you're getting, also the type of cardio that you're doing, and how aggressive you want your goals to be when it comes down to fat loss or muscle gain. It literally takes a couple minutes to put in all your information and then I'll send you a full report on your calorie goals completely for free. If you want to get started on that and you want to get an accurate estimate of your calories and what you need to eat each day for your goals, head over to the description below and click the link to access and literally you're going to get that for free. Now, once you have the number from my calculator, this next step is super important, which is tracking your food intake for a few weeks or a few days to see how your body responds. If you're trying to lose fat, but the scale isn't really moving, you may need to reduce your intake a bit. If you're losing fat steadily, but you're feeling constantly hungry, maybe that's a sign that you may need to increase your calories a bit so you're fueling yourself properly. The key here is adjusting based on real world feedback instead of blindly trust estimates of calorie expenditure from those tracking devices. Your body's going to tell you what's working. You just have to pay attention. I have a number of videos on calorie and macro tracking, so I'm going to link a couple of those in the description box, and I think they're going to help you get started if, if this is completely new to you. But look, I completely understand that navigating this process alone, specifically, can be pretty overwhelming. The calorie confusion, constant trial and error, and the frustration of losing and regaining the same 20 to 30 pounds, maybe that's your case, over and over again, it's pretty annoying. After working with hundreds of successful men, hopefully like you watching this video, I've learned that it's not about discipline, it's about having the right roadmap. And there are specific things within their metabolism that can be heard in the process of trying a bunch of different things that are not working. This is exactly what I created a free masterclass where I break down the three-step blueprint high achieving men use to melt away the fat that is keeping them stuck and build a lean muscular physique without restrictive dieting, endless cardio, or sacrificing family and social life. In this training, we're going to uncover the number one hidden factor making fat loss harder every single time that you try and how to fix it, why popular diets like keto and intermittent fasting might be sabotaging your metabolism, and what truly works instead, and my proven formula to sustainably losing fat, building muscle, and maintaining an athletic body year-round. Hundreds of my clients literally started watching that video, and they used that exact same process to transform their bodies and their lives. So if you're ready to finally stop the cycle and you don't want this to be another video that you watch, make sure that you click the link in the description to access the free training right now. We'll send it to you over in case you want to rewatch it. Now we're going to finish today's video with a little bit of an insight into what I personally use for tracking my health and fitness. I wear a whoop tracker. It's not a watch, but it's simply a sensor that captures heart rate, movement, respiratory rate, sleep, and turns a lot of that information into health insights from things like recovery to heart rate variability, sleep stages, and a bunch of other things through specific algorithms that, again, are proprietary. Now, since we're at the topic of energy and calories burned, I'm only going to focus on that. I like to look at the trends my whoop gives me rather than single numbers. Let me actually show you this on screen. If we look at this week, my average expenditure is about 2,151 calories. My monthly average is 2,359 calories, and my six-month average is 2,371 calories. Now, you can see it's remained pretty stable, though, and pretty consistent. I also know that I eat about that many calories, an average of 22 to 2,400 calories every single day. And I know this because I do track them. And I also know my weight has remained stable as well too. So I know this isn't really in line with my true calorie expenditure. So I use this data, but I make decisions based on the trends that I'm seeing and what's actually happening in my body. So see, you can use that stuff. You just need to make sure you're smart about it and not necessarily over obsessing or getting carried away by what this numbers, which is something that happens often. And I have clients that struggle with that. And I sometimes need to tell them to roll things back a bit and stop using so much information from those trackers because it's not going to help or support them. All right, but that's all I have for today. I hope that you enjoyed this one. I love making this video because I absolutely enjoy talking about tech. If you have any questions about what I covered today, feel free to drop them in the comments. I respond most of them. I release a new video every single Wednesday in case you don't want to miss out on those. So make sure you're subscribed if you enjoy this video and make sure you also hit like and share it if you find that this is something that other people are going to benefit from. I'll see you back here soon for another video. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next week.